Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna upgrade and stylize one of my favorite projects that I've been a part of with Harley Benton, this aged white EX84 Modern. Let's make it more Metallica. So I'm a massive, massive Metallica fan. Middle school, early high school, literally all I do on guitar is try to downpick as many Metallica riffs as fast as I could. And while I was never a huge fan of the Explorer shape, I'm a huge fan of James Hetfield's style and his taste in guitars. So at about 300 bucks, if you're like me and super into Metallica, this is clearly a modder's dream. Now, it's a Harley Benton EX84. It's not a Gibson Explorer. It's not an ESP MX220. So I thought it'd be a little lame to try to convert this into a straight eat replica guitar, right? Like the body's a little smaller than an Explorer. It doesn't have the banana hockey stick, whatever you want to call it, headstock shape. It just wouldn't look right. It'd be like slapping Lambo badges and colors onto a Volkswagen. Not that Volkswagens are bad. My Jetta's is basically like driving a road legal go-kart, but it'd be a stretch to pass it off as an Aventador. I've been watching a lot of car YouTubers lately, and I guess that's the comparison I'm going with here. Also with the smaller body shape, it might end up looking like a children's version, like the little tykes eat Explorer. Moreover, in general, I respect the work and process that goes into making them, but I'm not too into owning replicas of other people's guitars myself. So, all that being said, there is another route we could take. And I did want to try to do something with it that went with the overall theme of this guitar being not so subtly Hetfield inspired. So first things first though, we gotta upgrade any components that need replacing. Now I've been saying it for a while and this EX84 is the perfect example, but Harley Benton's in like the $300 price range are like perfect pre-built mod platforms. It's all assembled, all the finishing's done, it's got a great neck joint and tummy cut. Not only that though, but not much actually needs replacing. Most cheap guitars you'd expect to replace the nut, the tuners, the hardware. Here, we've included a Graftech nut, Korean WSC tuna mannequin stop bar tailpiece combo, and Grover locking tuners. I mean, I could replace the tuners with Spurzel, but that's completely unnecessary. These pickups though, now look, I hesitate to call them because tone is subjective, and I'm sure someone somewhere likes them. But yeah, um, they're sh They're so muddy, which is especially surprising since they're active pickups. So those have to go. The question is, what set do I put in here? So there are two candidates, both from EMG. The first is a headset that I bought years ago for a project that, uh, <laughs> went nowhere. They've kind of just been sitting in a drawer forever. And this would be the obvious choice, except that they've got chrome covers. And I can't tell. Does this look weird? With like the black hardware and aged white finish, does this look odd? The other option is the Bone Breaker set, which EMG sent me to demo a while back. It's Kirk Hammett's signature set, and aesthetically it's more of like a straight swap. Now even though it's Kirk Hammett's signature set, not James's, it's really just an 81 in the bridge, and then a 60A in the neck. The 60A is just a 60 with an Alnico magnet instead of ceramic, so it's a little bit warmer, but essentially, yeah, same pickup. And obviously they've got the green logos instead of the silver or gold or red or whatever EMG is using these days. And the 8160 combo is what James used for literally decades before the headset launched, so both are definitely suitable options. I, I genuinely don't know what the right call is, so I'm gonna uh, ask you on Instagram real quick. And Instagram overwhelmingly said the headset, but, and I hate to do this to you guys because I too appreciate the audience feedback. I've just had an idea of what I want to do aesthetically with the black EX84, which I also have. So I think I'm going to use the bone breakers in the aged white one and the headset in the black one. <laughs> well, this video is all about the white one, but you'll see more about the black one in a future video soon. I promise I won't take my time with that one. But for now, enough talking. Let's get to it.
kind of interesting. I've never seen a switch wiring like this before. One that's like a rat's nest in there, but also it looks like... Yeah, I don't know. I've never seen that before. The original idea was to maybe replace it, but I'm not too clear what's going on here. It's kind of looking like something that <laughs> I would rather just leave alone. But for now, yeah, I'm just gonna desolder all of this and uh, throw in some EMG pots. By the way, though, massive shout out for shielding all the control cavities. That's really nice in a $300 guitar. Just something you don't normally expect to see at the budget level. <laughs> Turns out there was a lot more connected to this than I'd originally hoped for. So I took it apart. Uh, it doesn't seem too bad, so I think I'm gonna stick with it. Also, I don't have another switch lying around, so if it's too crappy, then I'll replace it eventually. But for now, um, I'm gonna put my faith in it. So this is what the EX84 looks like, more or less disassembled. Again, cavity shielding, very impressive. All right, now that it's been gutted, time to put in the EMGs. All right, so check this out. Now, I know this looks like a little bit of a mess, but I swear it's not. But this is kind of like why I always recommend EMGs for uh, new modders or like a first pickup swap. One, the solderless system is so easy, everything just kind of like clicks into place. You don't have to deal with the soldering iron if you're not comfortable with that. And two, the documentation is so good. Like as much as I love the Fishman stuff and the Fishman team, their customer support isn't that great. The documentation can be kind of confusing. And if you reach out by email, and I've heard this from a couple of people, not just myself, they'll tell you that their pickups are made for professionals, which is like not very helpful. But this is like super easy. It's like Lego basically, which makes it really fun because it's not frustrating. All right, let's wire in these bone breakers.
I will admit, as far as wire management goes, this, uh, this could be better. To be fair, before I get crucified in the comments, I never claim to be an expert, but it'll work, and uh, it's one in the morning, so <laughs> I'll sort it out later if I need to. But yeah, if uh, you decide to do this, mm, do it better. I believe in you. So at this point, the electronics are done, time to move to graphics. Now at the time, I thought that Sharpie art would be cool, and I'll explain after why that's not the best move, but it's uh, what we did. So step one was to draw the design, then put the designs on tracing paper. Since I got detention more times than I can count for art class because I have no visual art skill whatsoever, I came up with the concepts, but got a friend to help me out with the drawing. Here, I have to give a shout out to Mark H. Backelman Jr. for tweeting me this picture of a seal taking a giant bite out of clueless and quite frankly, shocked Mola Mola. So I asked my friend to take that, make it more epic in like a cartoony way and to have the Mola Mola winning the battle, obviously, because that's like the logo of the channel. And she's like, what the f are you talking about? And I'm like, don't worry, you got this. Then you flip it over and put charcoal on the opposite side to rub it into the guitar and create an outline. And I was talking to Pete Cottrell about the graphics and staying away from making an easy bake version of the eat and he suggested maybe the web explorer. Really likes that idea. So here are the spider webs, very similar to the design it was inspired by. But instead of just dots in between the lines, decided to go with phases of the moon. No idea why, just thought it looks cool. So now that you put it on tracing paper with the charcoal outline on the back, you can go over it again with a pencil. If you push hard, it puts an outline into the guitar that you can follow with a Sharpie or acrylic paint pen or whatever. Again, the point of these graphics was to do something Metallica inspired, but with a unique twist on it. James Hetfield has like a Papa Het graphic there that didn't really make much sense to have on this guitar, hence the epic seal versus sunfish. And then I really like these. Wasn't too sure what to do with the other corners. James has some sort of tribal design on his that I wasn't really feeling. But with the moon phases in the other corners, the moon's gravity obviously affects the oceans, so I thought it would be fitting to do an Asian ocean wave pattern, like how it's drawn in a lot of like traditional folk paintings in those two corners.
then on the back is kind of like an easter egg when coming up with the actual battle drawing one draft she came up with was like a cute version and it was like well i can't have that on the front of this tribute to metallica guitar but i do like it so let's put it on the back so there it is in all its glory with the seal casually nomming on the head of a <laughs> very annoyed mola mola So that looks cool. Might have messed up a little bit though. If I'd done any research or any preparation whatsoever, would have quickly found out that uh, poly isn't the best surface to do Sharpie art on because it's so shiny and so plasticky, it's really hard for the Sharpie to kind of stick to it. But what's done is done. It looks sick. It's like Hetfield inspired school notebook doodle art. So I'm kind of trying to figure out the best way to rectify this situation. Now I asked the internet and there were two main responses. Suggestion number one, I've learned that I should either use a poly or lacquer clear coat and just spray over it. And also whatever I do, absolutely do not use poly or lacquer because it'll dissolve the Sharpie. <laughs> Basically what I'm saying is uh, results inconclusive, which I found kind of surprising because people get their guitars signed with Sharpie all the time. So I don't know what they do to protect those signatures. Now I did come across this though. Now it's a water-based sealer, so it seems to be relatively safe to at least protect the Sharpie lines. And then once there's a thin layer protecting the art, then I can go over it with poly or lacquer to permanently seal it in. If this works, this should be a good tip for anyone looking to protect signatures on their guitar. But yeah, let's give it a try. I'm gonna try it on a small area first, see how it goes, and uh, fingers crossed. I've actually just learned in the last hour that this is the only Harley Benton EX84 in this color in existence forever. So fingers crossed, I don't f it up. I've just put a very thin layer just to test it out. You can see it was so thin it's already starting to dry. So far, no smudges, so I'm just gonna let it dry fully. I was planning on just doing a thin layer first to protect the Sharpie and then doing a thicker layer, but this might actually work, you know. Okay, so the results are pretty good. You can see when I angle the camera right, there's like this thin film layer forming over the top. Like this will definitely protect the Sharpie. Now it doesn't look too great. It's much more pronounced on camera, but again, the point was to put a layer of protection on top of the Sharpie. That way it's protected from whatever I decide to cover it with to permanently seal it. And also this is a learning experience. I'm taking you along for the journey. In hindsight, maybe it would be better to do the spray, but the reason I went with the brush is, uh, well, my local Michaels was completely out of the spray at the time of filming. And also I thought this was easier to control the application area, especially since I don't have a garage or anything like that. But yeah, I'm reasonably happy with that. Now it's time to protect the rest of the art. Alright, done with the front, gonna wait for it to dry and then get started on the back. In the last 
last thing I'm doing here is something that I do with all of my poly gloss finished guitars that I don't intend on selling. I'm taking the rough side of a scotch bright sponge and sanding the absolute shit out of the back of the neck. It takes a lot of the shine off, makes it less sticky and faster to play. Alright, so all the Mod Podge is dried, the Sharpie art is all protected enough. Now it's time to hear what it sounds like compared to stock. First, in a demo mix where I'll be switching back and forth and then isolated sounds like the guitar by itself, sands, bass, and drums. Now, something quick to note here is that the EMGs are using my normal settings. The Roswell active pickups are really weird and I had to change a lot on the amp and set the precision drive for extra tightness to get them to sound good for the original EX84 demo. They sounded like garbage using my normal settings and if everything was set the same, the EMGs would absolutely wipe the floor with them. All right, here we go.
Yeah, so the EMGs have more body, more definition. They're just better, in my opinion. Uh, what do you think? Overall though, I am so happy with how this project came out. One, I think it looks sick. I know a lot of people will probably get triggered that I didn't make it eat themed, but Aged White with EMGs, classic. And it's got like a Hetfield inspired notebook doodle type artwork. It doesn't have like a clean decal or anything, so it looks really personal. And it's like a tribute to different eras of Metallica. And two, you know, I'm incredibly privileged to be able to demo all sorts of guitars on the channel, but this $300 project is the most fun that I've had with guitar in quite a while. Modding cheap guitars is always a blast, but more than that, it takes me back to when I first started playing guitar. Last few weeks, I haven't been playing for a job, haven't been playing to make content. I've just been downpicking all the Metallica riffs on this thing for nothing more than the pure joy of it. So this is my massively Hetfield inspired EX84. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Maybe it gives you a few ideas for your own home projects. Obviously it's not the most professional job ever and I would never charge anyone for work like this. Like any professional luthier is probably long since clicked off this video after getting permanent brain damage from face palming so hard. But you know what, it's something you can do in like a day in an apartment. No special tools or anything required, links to everything I used in the description. And again, it's just super fun. I'll probably go over it with Polly or something off camera to permanently seal it in, but that's where this project ends for now. I think if I was to do this again, I would do something like some light sanding on the area where I wanted graphics so the Sharpie sticks better. Unfortunately, I'd already started modding the black one as like a sister project before the white one was done, so I didn't do it there either but um, it also came out great. I'm currently editing the video of that one too. Spoiler alert, I think I actually like that one better. Should be out soon, so make sure you're subscribed and you got notifications turned on. They're the big red button and bell down there and that actually really helps out. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. Let me know what you think of these quick vloggy mod style videos. If you wanna see more of them or if you've got any project ideas, I'd love to know in the comments. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video.